This is Comic Geek Speak episode 1905, Multiversal Movie Review, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and The Flash. Welcome to Comic Geek Speak. I'm Adam Murdo. I'm Ian Levison. I'm Shane Kelly. And I'm Chris Eberle. Uh, ben Grimm giving us the full Monty there. And, <laughs> and surely a shipwreck doing whatever he was doing. And shipwreck torpedo. and torpedo. Both, both of them pulling their things out for everybody. That was... Uh, <laughs> Absolutely wonderful <laughs> job. Well That's done. summertime. Exactly. Well, welcome one and all to the show. And we have two movies to tackle for you guys to catch ourselves up a little bit. Uh, we, we obviously can also discuss Indiana Jones at a later date. And I think that'll probably be our next comic talk. We have all seen it. So if we have time, we may throw in a little bit of that at the end. But we got to touch these two first. And that, of course, is Across the Spider-Verse and The Flash. Uh, and of a mention... At the top of the episode, before we even start talking anything, spoilers abound, spoilers abound, spoilers abound. If you have not seen Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse or The Flash, expect this to be a spoiler-heavy episode because it will most definitely be that. Uh, Forewarned is forearmed in honor of Pansy. So uh, let's, uh, let's keep that in mind, gentlemen. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about it. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot to discuss, to say the least. Uh, two banner movies, one of which did absolutely amazing at the box office and is still doing amazing at the box office, pun intended, because it's Spider Man. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the other one, not so much uh, mm-hmm. at the box office. Uh, well, the flash, flash in the pan. Yes, flash in the pan, indeed. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it, 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 this this last week. Uh, like weekend numbers, just even looking at it right now. Um, and mind you, you know, not a lot came out this last week. The Flash has now dropped down to number 11 at the box office and only brought in another $2 million. It has made a total of $105 million at the box office. In comparison, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse has made $357,678,700, wow. which puts it uh, officially. On top of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three and Gross, wow! So it is the number one movie of the of the year and of the summer right now. Um, certainly did not see that one coming, but man alive, do we have a lot to talk about for both of those movies? Um, before we get there, of course, you folks out there, as I look in your you. general direction, you, 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 uh, make these episodes happen. Let me thank you so much for that continued support that you give over at patreon.com slash comic geek speak. Uh, a little bit behind the curtain uh, that uh, we're going to be doing some slight rearranging at the studio, to say the least, uh, as uh, it's a little bit of a water hazard uh, this last week that we'll probably discuss a little bit more on our next comic talk. But um, there there will be some uh, rearranging and, and replacing that may need to be done. And uh, that's where you patrons uh, very much help this show continue to be made. Absolutely. So we thank you so much for any support you give for as little as a dollar a month. You can do so over, over at patreon.com slash comic geek speak. Uh, and uh, yeah, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, if you want to give old school donations, you still can uh, at the comic geek speak website uh, via PayPal uh, via the uh, comic geek speak.com slash donate dot PHP page. Uh, and uh, of course, if you don't have money to give, then Please don't force anything. Uh, just spreading the word about the show or leaving a review or just letting us know that you're enjoying it is more than enough for us. And we thank you so much for any support that you happen to give in any way that you can. And thank you, thank you, thank you to once again to all our patrons at patreon.com slash comic geek speak. Thank you. Indeed. Danke. All right, uh, so let's start off with Across the Spider-Verse, as that uh, chronologically was the first of the two movies to come out in theaters. Uh, and uh, this is, the, uh, of course, the sequel, the follow-up to uh, Spider-Man uh, 
uh, uh, the into. first spider, into the Spider Verse. Thank you. Uh, and I, I've I've heard so many people making mistakes on which movie they're talking about, whether it be Into <laughs> the Spider Verse or Across the Spider Verse, because they are very very similar names. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And the next one is going to be Beyond the Spider Verse, um, mm-hmm. which we're all just a preposition apart. Indeed. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that third one, by the way, and we will have uh, some stuff to talk about also behind the scenes of uh, the Spider Man Across the Spider Verse movie. Uh, as of now, is tentatively scheduled for next year, but huh. I think that's going to be pushed back uh, because, ac- according to a, a bunch of people, work hasn't even begun yet, and it takes more than a year to make an animated movie. Yeah. So we'll. They, they didn't. They didn't make them simultaneously. These two. These two. They did not. I don't think so. No. Okay. No. Very basic work was done on it, but nothing like no, no lines have been recorded yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. No animation has been completed. So it's. It's very much a work in progress uh, that has barely even begun. Um, but whenever it does come out, we'll be happy to see it. Let's yeah. focus number two for now. Uh, Shane, uh, your initial yes. on Across the Spider-Verse. Um, I loved the first one, and I had no doubts that I would enjoy this one. There is, um, there's a YouTube channel I follow um, with a lot of toy talk. It's uh, Yes Have Some, and one of the hosts on there is named Ryan Dole and he has, he's worked on both of them mm-hmm. on the animation. Okay. And he said, when the first one was such a huge success, they came to everyone and said, okay, that one was an hour and a half. You can go nuts now. And they obviously did because they made this one much longer, um, much more in, in uh, intertwined, much more, um, uh, interesting much more detail much more happening uh so uh, yeah i loved it i was blown away it 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 exceeded my expectations and i was not expecting it to go where it went definitely so it was a very very surprise ending for me yeah i i i I kind of understand now and i i said so when i saw it i kind of understand what it was like for people to see empire strikes back in the theaters and (laughs) and ending that that it had yeah yeah the luke i am your father moment and what have you um of course not actually said that way because that's a berenstain bears uh situation the lines are slightly different but we'll always say it that way whether we like it or not um i i i my entire theater was a, a gasping when the movie ended um yeah and that's really like what what better experience can you have than that when your entire theater is like what <laughs> yeah clapping yeah. and gasping yeah mm-hmm. absolutely it was a lot of fun uh chris your your thoughts it's the essence of spider-man the spirit of the character um everything that at least speaking for myself that i love about the universe of spider-man but it, it doesn't even matter so much whether it's Miles Morales or Peter Parker, whoever, or, or Spider Gwen or what have you, both these films have really gone to the heart of what makes the character such an enduring icon since since his his inception in, in 1962. Um, and you know, it, furthermore, it it emphasizes so so well the relationships, the family aspect, all the, the things that make Spider Man tick and make him such a compelling character that we keep coming back to again and again. Um, it was it was a sheer delight uh, on every level. Uh, and again, I think these two films are two of the best superhero films in general that have come out um, yeah. in 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 recent years. That they're 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 fun. Uh, they, they have some real pathos to them as Spider Man always should. Uh, and and of course, as fans, the amount of, of deep dives they go into in this movie in particular, um, yeah. you know. The, the the 90s riff on ben riley was hilarious for example um <laughs> it, it, it's they're, they're 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 superb well we'll 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 get further into just how superb it is and my god that ben riley stuff just had me on the floor <laughs> I, I i was worried to be honest that it would be too heavy into 90s dark parody but i feel like it just it, it hit the right spot for me uh to, yeah. to, to say the least and speaking of spot Murd, the floor is yours. Your thoughts. <laughs> on, what makes you think uh, I'm going to focus on that character, Ian? <laughs> I, I don't know because I've met you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, it's the, the spot is certainly he's made it now. He, he's had his Hollywood <laughs> hate. Every, everyone knows who Jonathan Owen is at this point, and I'm yeah. I'm very happy for him and for his creators back in the '80s. And <sighs> hurrah for the spot! So yeah, that's he, he, actually <laughs> it wasn't going to be the the first thing I mentioned when I, I talked about this movie, but uh, I'm 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 glad that he was in there. I just. I was kind of surprised and aghast at how like dangerous the character ultimately became. Yeah. Uh, he, he, they started out portraying about the way the average comic writer would write this spot. It's just kind of this pathetic little nobody trying and failing to rob a convenience store. You know, all this amazing interdimensional teleportation ability that he has. You know, a character with truly limitless potential, and he's been played as a joke for so long. And yet by the end of the movie, he, he's this interdimensional like not, yeah. not quite anti-monitor level but at least like anti-matter man level threat yeah and it's it did it, it, it took me a little bit by surprise that they they went that far with the character but i'm glad that they had the vision to see just what this what what the spot could be if pushed too far Absolutely. um yes as for the movie you know beyond the, the level of the spot uh yeah it's i i I do think that this movie is an improvement over the first part. Um, the animation has only become more sophisticated, and it was gorgeous the first time out. But now, I mean, it's it. I, I best describe it as visual jazz. I think mm. in certain of the of the fight sequences, for example, just everything that's going on visually and just the way it's all choreographed and. Uh, just especially the for some reason the scene the battle scene with the renaissance vulture it's just like oh, the yes. collision of the different animation styles and yet the wholly coordinated collision it's it's like the animators are riffing off of one another the characters are are just involved in this intricate visual dance with one another and you know the, the score you know, just on the level of audio jazz is also intertwined there it's it, it's it, it, it's a lot for the senses uh, to the point that I think I, I miss some of the dialogue because you know, the, the audio mixing was privileging and rightly so like the, the the sounds of the battle and the music and yet the characters are still you know just uh, doing their little you know, bebop line in the middle of everything and and, uh, and it's, some of the dialogue was lost to my ear is what I'm saying but uh, I was enjoying what my senses were able to pick up in spite of that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do, however, think that this, the story is perhaps a little thinner than uh, that the first movies was. Um, uh, but it, as Chris said, I appreciated the, 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 path, the level of emotional pathos that, that was here. I mean, you, you see Miles Morales just uh, being bogged down in... Uh, adolescent male fear of being excluded from things and uh, just questioning his own self-worth, teetering on the brink of self-loathing, you know, just the fact that he was left out of this little, well, Miguel O'Hara and his little spider linear men club and somehow Miles was not allowed to join this thing because Miguel, you know, I, I think of uh, Julian Lytle, you know, he did a detailed review of this, of course, as he does of most of the movies he sees, but uh, the, the link on Facebook, he put to it, his, his single sentence encapsulation was, it was good, but they got my boy Miguel out here acting crazy. And <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that, 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 that bothered me a little bit. And, and, you know, I'll wait to hear your thoughts about that too. But Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099 as the, you know, the rip hunter spider time master huh. of this whole thing. You know, just not, not wanting uh, poor Miles to join in any of their reindeer games and just getting crazy obsessed about uh, keeping this accidental Spider-Man out of the loop and... It, it, it didn't play very well to me. And when he just flat out roars in Miles' face that he's a mistake, which I think we can all agree is one of the most, it's one of the most terrible things that a young person can hear said to them. Sure. Uh, yeah. So that, that had the desired emotional impact, but it just didn't do much for the character of Miguel, which is kind of a shame. But yeah, yeah on the whole, it was, it was eclectic. It was spastic. It was a hell of a ride. It was, it was art. And it, it's the, the story it told could have, Left them a few more uh, spaces to breathe. Uh, on the whole, I think it was a, a real success. And I don't think there are too many people out there who would disagree. Yeah. Mer, uh, I'm glad you mentioned the audio mixing. Uh, and uh, that that is actually something that has come up. Uh, that there were theaters that uh, did not actually have their audio channels set properly. And oh. uh, because of that, the first... 
uh, I'd say the first like 20 minutes of the movie uh, were being lost to the ears of certain moviegoers because okay. the the music was louder than 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 the dialogue. Um, yeah. And and I found that in particular with the uh, the Gwen introduction, uh, that entire scene. When I went to see it, I w- I myself was struggling to hear the audio. Um, they've since uh, issued newer, updated versions of the film to theaters uh, because they could do that now because of digital. So they basically sure. updated the film so that the 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 channel mixing is a little bit smoother uh, because. It was the intention of the filmmakers for it to be set this way, but films are not usually set that way. So a bunch of the audio was not the way that it was supposed to be heard. Um, it fixes itself after the first 20 minutes, though, and then after that, I was pretty much able to hear everything. Uh, mm-hmm. So you're, you're you're far from the only one in, the, in that boat, Murd. Um, mm-hmm. I am glad you mentioned art, though, because I have up, I have up on my screen uh, an image the character designer for this movie for across the spider-verse is the one and only chris anka who uh has been one of my favorite comic book artists now for the past 10 or so years he's the one who redesigned the bulk of the x-men back in the day uh and gave uh gave storm her mohawk back with that uh mm-hmm. black costume with the x and and what have you um he also helped design uh uh, uh, the uh, the young X Men uh, of Bendis's run, uh, their their new costumes were entirely designed by by oh, Chris. Great, um, and, and he worked on uh, Runaways uh, with uh, with Rainbow Rowell uh, for quite some time uh, as the main artist of that series. And he he has since gone on to work on a bunch of stuff for Hollywood, uh, one of which was Across the Spider Verse, where he was the main character designer for a whole bunch of that. Uh, he got to draw one of the comic book covers that you see uh, that I have up on screen here uh, of the the streamlined new uh, Miles Morales outfit uh, as Brooklyn's finest here. And if you go on his Twitter, he's posted a bunch of different uh, designs he's made uh, for the movie, including a design <laughs> uh that uh that was in there um he's got a whole bunch of uh of work on the prowler outfits and uh the uh the spider-man 2099 stuff and obviously the where where it took him to try to get to you know the point of 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 where they were going to get for these new designs Uh, and i'm i'm it's one of the main things that made this movie pop was just how well realized all the different spider-man were that they all look different, that they all felt different. The animation styles, as Murd said, are one of the great things about this, like the spider punk sequences. <laughs> oh my God. God, those are so yeah. frantic and fast paced and yeah. out of this world mm. that, oh my, I, I loved every single minute of it. Mm. Um, Some hobby- bit of trivia I saw on IMDb, those spider punk graphics uh the animator for those he poached them all from spam emails he had received so it, it's all like found art <laughs> <laughs> oh that's outstanding i love it oh my god and, and and the way that they that they skip frames in 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 this movie in particular and they, and they have been doing since the first one you know how like they would make it feel more comic booky by like skipping a frame and then like uh, the action feels that much more frenetic in the in the in the in the process. Sure. They they would add frames and then take away frames for Spider Punk, which is one of the reasons why the animation feels the way it does. Is that he's on an entirely different plane of animation than every other character because that's quite literally how to design it. It's it's great um, having Spider Punk in there in a movie that's so uh, prowler heavy is even better because spider punk is hoppy brown uh you know Mm. one of one of the you know one of the prowlers that has been in the marvel universe um and then of course having uh donald glover's uh prowler show up later on in the movie as the live action version which is oh i couldn't believe it (laughs) it's been confirmed that that's the marvel cinematic universe version of uh of the prowler so we may possibly see him down the road but also including donald glover in this when 
he is essentially the reason why we have Miles Morales. There was a campaign back when the Amazing Spider-Man movies came out to have Donald Glover play Spider-Man. It was a fan campaign, and he mm-hmm. was he was honored and privileged about it and you know said it on multiple times over the years he was thankful and grateful for it and that's basically what gave bendis the bolt of lightning to create a black spider-man to create miles morales um and uh later on donald glover even voiced miles in the ultimate spider-man cartoon when when that character first appeared so it's great to have him included in there I would agree. For the most part, this movie is leaps and bounds above what we got in the first one. And the first one is almost perfect. This one, although it it is essentially half a movie, but it is in a good way because I cannot wait to get more. Um, I was at the seat of my pants and I I I loved every single minute of it. It's it, there are very few movies you can say are as comic book as these two movies yeah. into the spider-verse and across the spider-verse and across the spider-verse gets that point across even more it's it's art oh it's 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 amazing and 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 i know it's easier to do with animation but talk about the proper way to do a multiverse at all oh my god yes <laughs> it, it's it's just phenomenal even even just the idea of it was was better le- was, was more well conceived than any other multiverse around recently uh, it's just phenomenal to watch. It really was a feast for the eyes and, and ears. Um, and it even yeah, it was just fun. And it even managed to survive studio meddling because yeah. you know that that Venom scene was only in there because somebody had somebody, <laughs> somebody was like we, we need to have a character from Venom show up like uh, at, at some point. Like really? Like yeah? Okay. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Okay. Fine. Uh, wh- what's the what's the woman who works at the at the uh, at the corner store doing right now? Let's let's get her yeah. let's get her to show up <laughs> one of the scenes and that's and that's yep. what they did. But it was great because it was a spot scene and that just made it even more awesome. Um, Plus, just the wealth of spiders that showed up in this. Yeah. My From word. all walks of life and, and TV and animation and throwing in almost every movie you could you could think of. It, it really was amazing what they did. Absolutely. Uh, and, and having one of the one of the speaking roles be the spectacular Spider-Man, which yep. I think is one of the most criminally underappreciated versions of oh, yeah. animated. Oh, that's yeah. a great series. Superb. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to watch. Superb. Kevin yep. Moyer liked that one, and he's kind of a tough customer to please when it comes to Yes, he is. Thing. And let's say to the audience, if you're a Spider-Man fan, you've never seen that animated series, Protect with Spider-Man, seek it out. It's one of the – I think it's one of the most faithful to the essence of the character in terms yeah. of all the different cartoons that have been done over the years. It's really well done. Yeah. It's on Disney Plus in full. Um, so. Yep. So it is there. It's just it unfortunately got the legs taken out from under it because it was originally going to go like six seasons. And mm-hmm. then oh, wow. And after two, yeah. was, uh, Disney took over and they wanted to bring it in the house. So that's that's why they created the ultimate Spider-Man cartoon. And unfortunately, you know, that didn't get the love it got. But come on. We got freaking Spider-Man Unlimited in there. Like, <laughs> talk about obscure Spider-Man that nobody remembers. I mean, unless you were our, unless you were young when that mo- when that show came out, everybody forgot about that at this point. And it's still one of the coolest designs for a Spider-Man that just didn't really work uh, as as a concept because it was on Counter Earth and it was it was you know alternate reality and all that jazz. So I loved it, but. The everybody forgets that 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 exists, but there he was. He was there. <laughs> yeah, and, and Ian, I'll agree with you that that Spider Man twenty ninety nine rubbed me a little bit wrong at times. Um, just too mean, too overbearing to me for what mm-hmm. I remember reading the character. So that was disappointing. I get it. It is a main point of the whole story right now, and will be for the next one. However, I still uh. would have liked him to be a little less gruff than what he was. Well, it's a classic example of how what you see in another media is very different from what was originally on the page because that was sure. not Mag- that was not Miguel O'Hara at all, no, really. No. Um, I was thrilled to hear one of my favorite actors doing his voice, Oscar oh, Isaac. Yeah, yeah um, that was fun. But yeah, it's, it's just – I mean they changed him to serve the plot, obviously, for where yeah. they want the characters to go. But and, and, I, and I want through the third one, I do want him sort of – not that he needs redeeming, but I want him to be a little bit redeemed – to be more like what I would expect, would have expected and him to that be. That could certainly by occur. The end. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, look, I look at the look at the image Ian's chosen. Oh, that that scene was phenomenal. Stop him! Stop. Wait, wait, you you mean me? Me? me you? Me? me. Oh, well, and the and the one right here that you're showing for for those that can see it on the right, mm-hmm. um, with the white logo, that's the video game, right? Spider Verse yes, video games. That, that, yep, that, that's that, why it looks that, a little more rendered than the others. Yep, that's okay. the that's the Insomniac Spider Man, as as he's known as, because Insomniac is the studio that creates the uh, the video. Okay. Game. Mm. Okay. Uh, in fact, they were uh, at one point uh, at the beginning of the movie. Genki is playing the upcoming Spider-Man game uh, on 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 the uh, on the TV. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I saw that. Yeah, it, that's uh, the, he, that was a little bit of an Easter egg they threw in there. Is that he's playing uh, Spider-Man Two, which has isn't even out yet. Um, so that was pretty cool. But I part of me feels like they combined 2099 with uh, Superior in personality. Um, yeah, I could see that. Just just because Superior Spider Man had a a major part to play in the original Spider Verse story that Dan Slott created, um, and yeah. I think that without having to, you know, factor in a Spider Man that's not really Spider Man, he's actually Doctor Octopus, but he's Spider Man. Mm-hmm. I guess they decided that maybe instead combined characters a little bit and give us a gruffer version of, of Miguel than than we've gotten in the comics, even though he has been gruff at times. Just sure. never this. Not- yeah, never this. And, and I I get it. As they explained it, I get why they would so I sort of get why they would try to keep our Spider Man out of it that we're f- following. I I get it because it, it involves his dad and you know a certain I I do enjoy the the thread of fixed points that are in every Spider-Man, Spider-Person's life yeah. that can't be changed. And if they are changed, major ramifications happen. That's that's certainly the butterfly effect of multiverse and time travel. But um, I, I, don't know, I, I, I do agree with he should have been there the whole time, through and through. Yeah. And I'm, I'm almost, it was almost mad at Gwen Stacy, uh, Spider-Gwen for kind of going along with it as well as they wrote her to do like she was pretty off-putting to him now yeah no i i i I agree with that yeah it's it's hard to have someone who's a friend um essentially you know keep some of the most important facts about your existence from you and and that's kind of what she was doing uh chris i didn't mean to cut you off there go right go ahead no, I was going to say, uh, Shane, remind me that all the wonderful razzmatazz, or Murd put it best, visual jazz aside, what I enjoyed the most about the film is always what I enjoyed the most about Spider-Man, which was the interactions with his parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Their, their dynamic, their, their, their sort of the challenges in their relationship, uh, his, his interaction with Gwen. That's the part of the movie that I was really eating up because, you know, that just goes to the core of the character and his struggles, like trying to – his formative years – trying to find himself, like Murr was saying before, not a pleasant period in most people's lives um, yeah. to varying degrees. And, uh, you know, he's he's really struggling with all of that on top of, of course, this massive secret that he's carrying, which goes to the core of the character. Uh, really well done. And and, and I love <laughs> I love the, the dynamic in, in his parents' marriage. Yeah. It's really well realized. Like, you really understand yeah. that the, they're, they're the two characters, like how they deal with each other as a husband and wife. And like the, the father and, and his struggles to try to communicate with his son, which they did that in both films, are so well done. Yeah. Um, it, it's really fantastic writing. Oh, it is. Yeah. No, I, I I think that very few movies get a family dynamic like this and superheroes that manage to actually like fully balance them. Um, yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not easily done. Yep. Well, and, and and Chris, like you said, everything that Miles is going through really does hint at the core of Spider-Man. Whether it's Peter Parker, Miles Morales, or whoever, whatever Spider person it Spider is, Spider Ham, whoever it might Spider Ham, anybody, <laughs> it really, really does drive right to the core of what that person goes through to be yeah. Spider-Man. They are not going to have an easy time. There's going to be tragedy, almost certainly, in every single aspect of their existence just so they can be what at their heart they need to be, which is Spider-Man, Spider-Whatever, to, to help everybody as much as they can. 
Yeah. And Ian selected a great still. I love the rooftop party scene. Oh, it's yeah. great. That that was excellent. Just the whole flow of that and the, the different relationships that they were capturing was really well done. And and everything so. they did for for Miles in that whole discussion, like they're angry at him, they ground him, and then Gwen comes along and the mom gets a little bit soft hearted and the dad even kind of understands and lets it go for now. That's exactly what happens. Yep. As, you know, you can you can discipline your kids, you can don't embarrass you can, your kid in front of a girl. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 it just that's everything that happens when yeah. when you're a parent dealing with your kids. Yeah, yeah. And, and talking about family dynamics too. I mean, if we're going to talk about Miles' uh, family dynamic, getting more of the backstory of of Gwen's family dynamic. Mm. Oh, wow. yep, yep. God, when she got to go visit home and see her dad, oh my God, I almost lost it. That was brilliant. <laughs> that was- Absolutely brilliant. That was superb storytelling and also just finally getting to see her world a little bit because I mean, you know, yeah. we, we, got the, we got the basics of, of her, but you know, she was entirely in Miles's reality in the first mm-hmm. movie and, and yeah. he's actually seeing her origins, you know, seeing what happened to her, Peter, uh, the, 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 the horrible circumstances of which she loses her Peter and her father, you know, Captain Stacy, uh, Played by Shea Wiggum in this, by the way, who is uh-huh. great. Absolutely good every actor. Oh good my actor. god! Yeah. Um, but you know, ex- seeing the, the the tragedy unfold and then blaming Spider, uh, you know, Spider Gwen, because of course that's how it happens. You know, you blame yep. Spider yeah. because that's that's what happens. Spider Man gets blamed for things that he didn't actually do. That's yep. part of the character. And and then for for him, I was I was actually surprised, but glad that they wrote it this way. During that scene where she loses her Peter, and her dad still is trying to bring her in at that point, yeah. and just just the absolute tragedy of multiple things at that point, more so than most other Spider characters all at one time. Mm-hmm. It was it was just beautifully done. So, so thinking about that a little bit, um, and going to the you know the the continuity moments, you know the 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 core the core moments that every Spider Man should have, and when we when we got to meet Indian Spider Man, who I was such a great addition to this entire mm. thing, uh, played by uh, by Karan uh, Sony uh, Paviter Probakar, uh, you know, in his uh, New New York. Uh, what was it? Thank you, Mumbatton. That was ah oh, so beautifully read. Uh, <laughs> but you know when his when his uh, you know essentially his Captain Stacy uh, doesn't wind up dying and yeah. saved by Miles and continuity point broken and then the world starts to break around him. Part of me was wondering. Was that actually Miles' fault, or is something else a frontier? Because, because of what happens later on in the movie, where we find out, you know, the origins of Miles' spider, that it came from another reality, that it messed with his reality, and that although that reality has, to put it bluntly and and uh, and frankly, gone to shit, it has it hasn't started unraveling. You know, it hadn't started the white wall crisising that hmm. seems to be happening with Indian Spider-Man, which makes me think that something else is afoot and that the course of your reality can be changed without, you know, complete circumstances like that and the entire world unraveling. Something else is wrong here. Yeah, the idea that uh, there needs to be moments of life-altering tragedy in a Spider-Man's life. It's just too pessimistic yeah. for this creative team. It doesn't seem to be part of the core Spider-Verse ethos they're going for here, that they, that this team of you know Spider-Time cops have to make sure that uh, every Spider-Man has, or Spider-Person has a tragic death in their lives. It's, it, it, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't seem like something that's going to really prove to be necessary when, when investigate further. Well, and that's what I hope that that this, as Ian put it, this really is the Empire Strikes Back of the trilogy, where the good guys don't win, tragedy happens, and you think it's just no hope in some ways. But I really want them to turn that around and prove that all wrong, and I want it to be proven as a result of what Miles does. Oh, absolutely. Ian, Ian do you think there's a malevolent actor behind this that has not been revealed yet? 
I I think there might be uh, whether or not it is 2099 or whether or not it's some it's someone else. I think that uh, the story that 2099 tells about and, and I mean, you know, this goes further into his backstory that, you know, he essentially decides to take another version of his existence where he was, quote unquote, happy, you know, that he had a wife, that he had a that he had a kid, you know, they had a wife um and and take their lives and then it all got taken from him i'm i'm wondering if you know because clearly we're not following the full story of the original spider-verse if somehow there are if not the spider totems or what have you uh and the morelands of the world but something else involved that is leading this to happen or if it is actually 2099 trying to somehow get his perfect life back that's mucking with the uh the realities and the time streams i don't know it's yeah. it's just it's, just it's, um just not mephisto please oh uh, <laughs> i wouldn't it, say no to mephisto <laughs> <laughs> well as long great. as he doesn't make everybody forget everything i'll be okay yeah yeah, yeah. mephisto maybe one more day definitely not yeah yeah most, de- <laughs> most definitely yeah um but i i think there's there, there has to be more than what we've been told because uh, it just seems like it's a little too a little too much, and I just had to bring an image up of uh, of huh. the Indian Spider Man, just for what a wonderful addition to the cast, um, and and giving us such a unique take on you know a New York hybrid and just Spider Man in general. Love the design, the redesign here because it is it is a little bit different than uh, than the you know Indian Spider Man that we got in the comics uh, for a very short amount of time. Um, but it, it it works. It really, really works. Well, I really can't think of anything in this movie that was not designed well and enjoyable to see. Definitely. I, just I, I just felt like everybody involved from the beginning storyboards and production design all the way through the animation, the animators, special effects, everything right to the end. It really felt to me like they were putting their heart and soul into it for the amount of detail and Absolutely. superb work done in it. Yeah. No, ab- ab- absolutely. Which unfortunately leads me to bring up this point because it was going to happen eventually, and I might as well bring it up now. Um, that there were reports that came out uh, of the animation staff, quite plain and simply, being overworked on this on this project, um, and and that In our economic system, I can't imagine that, Ian. Come yeah, on, what a shock. <laughs> What a shock! <laughs> there, were, there were multiple people who just had to straight up quit midstream in this. Um, oh wow! Because uh, what what what? And you know, it, it's funny when you think about it because um, the one of the main problems in this may also be one of the main reasons why this movie is so damn good, um, which is that uh, although they weren't the directors this time around, uh, the uh, you know, Lord and Miller, who who wrote this along with Dave Dave Callahan, would see fully rendered animation, and then decide that it needed to be changed to better work with the movie. And the flow would be changed, and then they would have to fully render it again. And then you fully okay. render. Um, one of the reasons why, at least you know, from what we've heard behind the scenes, that that they were taken off of Solo was because. They were freewheeling it on the takes. They were like, okay, let's try it this way. No, let's try it this way. Let's try it this way. And that's not how Star Wars likes to work. You know, they like to work with a template, except for when they hire J.J. Abrams last minute, they ruin a third movie. Anyway, um, uh, what? Uh, <laughs> well, I had the blade right in there. I almost spat out my T on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it was too easy, Chris. It was too easy. Um, but 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 either way, like you know, that was one of the reasons why that they that they supposedly were taken off of Solo was that they were freewheeling it a little bit too much. And with across the Spider Verse here, they were seeing completed shots, then they wanted them changed, and then they had to, then they had to do them again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Final product is the amazing movie that we got. Um, and there even have been people who worked on the project that said, "I'm not faulting the project; I'm faulting the process," which is you cannot have us work. 12 plus hours a day and expect us to not burn out and i i completely wholeheartedly agree with that um and hopefully this third movie will not experience that with a release date that was set for a year from now which people in the animation industry were like there's no way in hell this is happening 
just don't even bother just say tbd don't tell us it's coming out in a year you know you know don't 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 feed us uh uh you know shit on a on a plate and call it stew like it's it's not it's not it's not possible like just stop um and i do hope that this is at least possibly going to change things at least a little bit moving forward for the people who worked on the project even though the project came out you know absolutely beautiful in the end yeah yeah well, it sounds like no, you know the, the the process gave us a grand result, but a lot of bleeding to get there. So definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely the case, yeah. Um, which you know can also go back to you know what we've heard about Marvel overworking their CGI guys, like their special effects teams. Like it's th- there's a reason why there are strikes happening right now in the industry, uh, and and I think that if this were to hit the animation side of things as well, uh, there may have to be change of coming. Um, but we haven't gotten there yet right now. Just the WGA is on strike and possibly the actors may, may be joining them soon. Uh, so it's Hollywood, man. It's a business and I'm glad I'm not in. <laughs> <'Cause>, yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. Um, but let's, uh, let's talk a little bit of, about uh, further structure of the movie with with miles you know going through the the portal and uh you know wind up winding up uh screwing up a mission but at the same time then you know getting himself the day pass of the day pass like like this is what we give kids we, we can give this to adults uh, for for being in the uh, in the spider headquarters which was pretty awesome but the reveal at the end of the movie before we get to the final 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 reveal which is when Miles, after fighting tooth and nail to get back to his reality, when he's essentially told by 2099 and others that his father has to die in order for his story to live, that sometimes sacrifices have to be made to, to make you the hero that you are. Um, and he does whatever he can to get back to that universe and write things. When he gets into his room, and he starts talking to his mom and he starts revealing that he's spider-man and his mom has no idea who spider-man is yep yeah yep i lost my crap that Great was scene. so well realized and yep. you know because because with, with gwen being outside the window as well like you think she's watching this happen but instead she sees an empty room because he's not actually in the reality that he actually belongs to Oh my God, that was it was, it was actually it was actually frightening. Like, what? yeah, as you realize what's actually going on. Well, yeah. So. See, yeah, I, my, my crap remained intact because I knew what was going on from the start. Because if you watched the scene where he first went into the go home machine or whatever they call it, yeah. uh, Earth forty two flashed up plain as day on one of the monitors. Mm. So you could see right there that oh, that's what's happening. It's not sending him back to his universe, Earth sixteen ten. It's sending him back to the point of origin of the spider that bit him. So if you're watching carefully, this none of this was surprising. Fair, fair for problem. me, it it was it was a little dis- disorienting when he was talking to his mom at first, but the minute she didn't realize. There, like the minute she's like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Then I'm like, oh, he's not in the right place. And then when you saw Gwen see the empty room, like, oh yeah, he's not. She, neither of them in the right place. Oh. Yeah. And then just to hang an extra lampshade on it, they had to spell it out in narrative captions on screen, <laughs> which is neat to see because it's a comic booky touch. But I'm in the wrong universe, and I'm like, I know. <laughs> it was on the monitor in the scene with the go home machine. It yeah, makes- yeah. I I missed that on the monitor the first the first time around, Murd, and I'm sure I'll very much easily recognize it. You know, when I watch it. 18 times once it's available on Disney Plus and what have you, because I know I'm going to. Uh, but oh, sure. yeah, it's I, I I was shocked there. But then what, as he was talking to his mom, that's when I was like, I was like, I was like nudging uh, that, you know, Martha next to me being like, oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's he's not where he's supposed to. Oh, my God. It's happening. This is happening. And boy, oh, boy. Um, yeah. I don't know. If you, I don't know if you guys realize this, too, but Earth 42. I'm wondering if that has the significance that I think it does. Naming it Earth-42, having that be the Spider-Man that would have broken the color barrier. Number 42, Jackie Robin. Oh, yeah. good call, Ian. Yeah, I like good it. Good call. 
you know, because that, that's that's how that world should have been, you know, where that would have been that world's only Spider-Man. It wouldn't have even had a Peter, supposedly. It would have been just, been, you know, Miles Morales as Spider-Man in that world. I think naming it Earth, Earth 42, whether intentionally or not, really, really works for what should have been or what could have been. And I they, can't imagine it not being intentional. Definitely. Yep. Um, plus, I appreciate that uh, the MCU is actually Earth, you know, one nine 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 in this one, rather than six one six, as as in the Doc- Doctor Strange movie, because it ain't six one six. We know what six one six is. We read it every month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, did you guys hear about the uh, the fourteen year old who animated the Lego? Yes. Scene? Oh, the Lego. Yes. Scene. Yeah. Actually, oh. Ben told me about that the minute the movie ended because he follows a little bit more about Lego video games and Lego still movies and whatnot, and and he had heard of that kid before doing something, and yeah, he 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 schooled me on that. <laughs> yeah, it was a a guy, a kid by the name of Preston Mutanga. Uh, who created a fully Lego uh, remake of the trailer. And Ward and Miller saw that and were so impressed by it that they got him to do the Lego sequence of the movie, which also is just great where, you know, thanks, Peter. You're one of our best. (laughs) Yeah. So great. Fantastic. Um, And I have to talk about Ben Riley. (laughs) Yes, of course. With how good is with my perfectly defined muscles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally nineties. Oh, from my Earth God. 94, of course. Of course, of course. One, having him be voiced by Andy Samberg. Very, very smart move. Because <laughs> <laughs> very few very few people can pull off the gravitas of Andy Samberg when it comes to being dark and funny at the same time. <laughs> um and just really the over the overdone narration, the 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 even the style of it, uh, he's animated to look like he is straight from the '90s comics. Yep. Um, it, it, it was it was great. Uh, you know, in a, in a perfect world, I would have loved to have seen a a, a more serious take on Ben Riley. But by the time this movie was over, I didn't care because it was still great. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I, you know, for cameos, I like J.K. Simmons reprising a role yet again. Reprising his role in every reality. That's, <laughs> yep. that's the best part. Every reality is J. Jonah Jameson is <laughs> J.K. Simmons. Because yeah. nobody does it better. Let's put no. it where it's at. No. Exactly. And, and to it. me, that is a fun constant through all the universes. That better be a fixed point everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the villains that were in the bubbles, uh, you know, the actual Rhino from the Spider Ham universe was yep. was it was a yep. nice touch. Uh, obviously, as we mentioned, Donald Glover, you know, being in there uh, from the from the MCU. Uh, trying to think of some of the other ones that were in there uh, off the top of my head. Uh, let me see if I can find. Yeah, I, I can't think of any at the moment. I can't remember. I saw it over a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, uh, but but I will I will also say that uh, you know somewhat related to that, but not not entirely. Uh, two hours and forty minutes. This is officially the longest American animated movie of all time. Wow. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was surprised by that. That uh, that no Disney movie had ever been longer than that. Which I mean, I guess makes sense because they like to make it like a hot a hot ninety for the most part. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and that's pretty consistent through most of animation. Sadly, I'm yeah, keying it to of like a young person's attention span, I guess. But this movie mm-hmm. was aimed a little higher and older. Yeah, and, and and production on this was only completed 13 days before the original release of the movie, <sighs> which goes back to the wow. time crunch that I was mm, talking yeah. about and the overwork and the burnout. Definitely. Um, what do we think of Spider Woman? Oh, I, I really liked how they used it in the, the story. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and using that particular version. I mean, although it's yep. not the, you know, the white Spider-Woman that we have in, in our reality, essentially it's using, you know, Issa Rae's uh, Je- uh, Jessica Drew in this instance is using the uh, the Marvel Now uh, pregnant Spider- uh, Spider-Woman that we got, which yep. I, I, yeah. was, I still have to read that series because I hear such wonderful things about that particular uh, arc of Spider-Woman. Um, that I'll have to go back and check it out at some point. I haven't read it yet either. Yeah. Is that no, the one that Dennis Hopeless wrote? Yes. You, you are right about that bird. Yep. yep. I just got the trade of that in my last uh, DCPS shipment. Nice. Very uh, nice. 
And that was Daniel Kalu- Kaluuya uh, voicing ho- uh, Hobby Brown, by the way, uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, the spider punk. So uh, he, he's yet another uh, voice actor that has done double duty in Marvel. Because well, uh, he was he was uh, he was uh, in Black Panther. He played with copy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. even even Spider Gwen, who was um, what's her name in Hawkeye? Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Kate Bishop. Bishop. Yep. yep. Bishop. Thank you. Oscar Isaac has now been Moon Knight and Miguel O'Hara. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, you could go through this. Marishala Ali is going to be uh, Blade and, uh, and uh, he's Aaron in this. Yeah. You know, yeah. so many, so many uh, reused people uh, along the way. Um, but I, I'm thrilled with every bit of, of what we got in here. Uh, and of course, we haven't even talked about Jake Johnson coming back as Peter. Uh, I love Jake Johnson. Love him since a new girl. Yep. He's he's great. But then having, you know, little May uh, <laughs> on the ride, you know, yeah. uh, that was that was adorable. And also really just shows the character arc that that character has had since since last we saw him. And it's great yeah. because I think he does. Older, like World War Peter Parker really well. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think he's pitch perfect in that. And I like that you got to see a little bit of Mary Jane, too, mm-hmm. yep. through that. And he's as close to the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man as I think we get in this, you know, even though we, yeah. we, we get some scenes from the actual movies, you know, we do see mm-hmm. death of, uh, of uh, a Ben from, uh, you know, from the, uh, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man on screen. I think yeah. his story winds up very close to original movie Spider-Man, even down to the dancing that they had in the first movie. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Um, any other any other thoughts on this outside of you know the way it ends, which which we just uh, we, yeah nothing nothing other than to talk about the ending, really for me. Okay, so let's get to it. Um, obviously, we you know we alluded to the fact that he wasn't where he was supposed to be, uh, and you know Miles steps in and finds a world where Uncle Aaron's still alive and. Uh, he never got bit by the spider. Instead, mm-hmm. he is the prowler of this very broken reality of yeah. Earth 42. Um, and, you know, where wh- where do we go from here? Bum, 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 to be continued in next movie, Beyond the Spider-Verse. And when, when that ended and the, the whole, like, to be continued or, you know, more to come or whatever, once it came up, my, my mouth went, uh, what? <laughs> And I looked at my watch and said, oh, my gosh, it has been the whole time because I knew time had passed and it felt long enough. But I thought, no, they can't end it. They can't. Oh, my God, they're ending it. Yeah. Now I've got to wait. And and the, the, the sheer joy of being surprised yet again in a movie, in a world where things get spoiled left and right mm-hmm. in today's Internet society, um, that was fun to just not have a clue that it was coming. And you know what? Part of me wishes that I hadn't seen the original title for the movie, which had the part one associated with it. Uh, oh, really? Oh, see, I know. I never saw that at all. I, I, I had heard I had heard Internet news about it being a two part movie in the early stages of of, wow. of the sequel being announced. Um, and and even there, there's even some uh, toys because, you know, as well as I do, Shane, you know, that it mm-hmm. takes toys to happen. And sometimes. Sure. That gets out that shouldn't get out. There are a couple of toys that got released that e- you can even see the part one on the logo. Uh, wow. Okay. The- so uh, my ignorance is bliss. Collector's items, Shane. Collector's items. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> There's too many collector's items in the world. Good heavens. <laughs> but but so many people didn't didn't know, and everyone around me didn't, and I didn't know it was going to end that way. But just yeah. just the way they pulled it off, it's just absolutely perfect storytelling and wonderful movie making so i'm curious to see in this universe he's in for example is it gonna be overrun with super villains right mm-hmm. there's no spider-man I, i'm just really really intrigued by that so well the uh, they mentioned the the movies J. Jonah jameson mentions what was it the sinister six cartel uh if yeah. i remember correctly uh in in passing so are we going to get a full sinister six at some point in in the next movie uh that that he has we- to we may, but I don't know that it would be who we think it would be. It would be tailored to that universe, because I think I think some of what happens, just like just like what happens with Batman, a lot of the villains are as a result of Batman being in existence. I think the same thing happens. A lot of the spider villains are 
as a result of Spider-Man being in existence. So if that universe didn't have a Spider-Man, you're going to have villains, but they're not going to be necessarily mm-hmm. recognizable that's, like what we think. That could be very Maybe some of them are actually good guys here. Maybe they're yeah. fighting yeah. the Prowler. Fighting the Prowler. Yeah, exactly. Good point. Could very well be. Yep. Uh, and that's that's the fun part of a mirror universe, a twisted universe, to get those those character twists as well. I'll, I'll also point out, and I, I don't know if you guys caught this, but Miles G. Morales, you know, the Miles of Earth 42, who is the Prowler, is not voiced by the same actor that is voicing Miles. Uh, oh, no, I didn't look at that. It, it, he's voiced by Jarrell Jerome. Uh <laughs> And I, I noticed it was a different accent. I just didn't notice that it was the different. I thought that it was just a different inflection being used by yeah. the actor. But That's what I thought. It is actually going to be voiced by an entirely different person. So yeah, Jarrell Jerome is the is the nice. Miles of Earth forty two. Um, so something to look forward to with that. Uh, and yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I I cannot freaking wait for whatever we get next in in this reality. You know, whenever we do happen to get it. Um, and also talking designs, the design for uh, Miles as the Prowler, that it has hints of his of his Spider-Man design, while at the same time being, you know, very distinctly the Prowler, is pretty damn great in my mind. Like that was that was a wonderful touch, and sure. I I can't I can't wait to see you know just how different this Spider-Man is. Because he ain't Spider Man, he's the Prowler. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, and and that and that he's still, you know, and you know, what he's been doing with Uncle Aaron in the, in this in this reality too, uh, is is a whole other thing. And and for that matter, we see that his father is dead in this reality. Mm-hmm. That's essentially yep. the beginning of what goes wrong here, that there is no Spider Man to save uh Miles' father. Uh, in in this world, and it kind of begins to spiral out of control. Um, really, is something else too. So, great stuff, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Chris, I was just mentioning as you stepped away the fact that the uh, the Earth forty two spiral kind of begins with the death of uh, of Miles's father. Uh, yes. because there's no Spider Man to to stop it from happening. So, all right. Uh, how many freaking swears do we give this sucker? That's that's. Kind of easy in my book, but uh, Chris, what do you give it? Five. Yeah, I, I also I I'm I was thinking four and three quarters just to be you know no perfect, but five five. Yeah, oh. I I can't think of anything that really was out, out was glaringly wrong that would make me not give it a five. Mm. Yep, I was thinking along exactly the same lines, Ian. Just uh, slice off a little something for room for improvement, but what the hell? Five. There you go. <laughs> We are unanimous. Gentlemen. Unanimity. All yes. right. Oh, I, I will. I will point out that Jack Quaid was a voice of one of the Peter Parkers in in this, and I'm going to have to catch which one because I'm not entirely sure. So that now makes Jack Quaid a man who has played both Spider Man and Superman in in, yep. in in the world. So go figure. Because God, I'm so excited for Strange New Worlds episode seven. Oh my God. <sighs> I, I can't. I can't wait for that. Uh, the the eventual, uh, you know, crossover between animation and and live action finally happening with lower decks. But uh, it, it also makes sense that uh, that Jack Quaid showed up in in across the Spider Verse because uh, Chris Anka also did the designs for the new the, the new Superman show. Oh, nice. Yep. Which I haven't watched yet. I haven't. I haven't gotten the opportunity yet either. But it's it's yeah. on my it's on my to do list to check out the first two episodes of that and and yep. more of that as well. Yep. yep. I've been watching well, odd moments at work. I've been sneaking in watching uh, the first episode on YouTube. Nice. Okay. Yeah, the first episode just for our listeners is available for free in full on YouTube. So anybody mm-hmm. who's access to Adult Swim or Max, you can check it out there uh, to see what you think of the first episode. By the animators of Legend of Korra, for that matter. So, well, to me, to me, just just the little bit I've seen, the animation looks spectacular. It does. Yep. All right, okay. and now for something completely different. Uh, <laughs> quite, quite literally, because it's a completely different reality. Uh, but hey, we're still spanning the multiverse here in a very yeah. different way. Um, and that, of course, is the Flash, a movie that we joked about on this show that we didn't think was ever going to come out. 
uh, lo and behold, it came out. Um, and only some people went to go see it. Uh, Man, I have to ask what 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 was the budget for the film? Way, oh, you know? way yeah, more, way more, way more. more. Box office. Uh, Jeez, yikes. I want to say three hundred million, three hundred fifty. It was something outrageous. Uh, yeah. So it's 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 full box office gross, including overseas at the moment, is two sixty two point six million, and its budget was anywhere between two hundred and two hundred and twenty million. Oh, okay. So here in the U.S., it has not made it back, and it's not going to, at least uh, from box office alone. But worldwide, it has barely made its budget back. Uh, and I, I think there are many reasons that in the U.S. that it didn't do well. Um, I, I will say this first. I had a fun time watching it. It does not set the world on fire. But I was pleasantly surprised at how much I did like it and enjoy it. Okay, well, great. Uh, I mean, Shane, please, by all means, uh, elaborate further. You might, you might as well go first with your thoughts. So, I, I think part of for for us who kind of in the know of these kinds of things and pay attention to them, the fact that they're rebooting the DC universe movie wise meant this one is inconsequential. No matter what happens, it it just has no bearing really even though that they try to say it's going to be the rebooting point it's going to be the new start this is where it starts and blue beetles next that really doesn't mean anything yeah couple that with how poorly ezra miller's reputation is in the world right now yeah. and all the trouble he got in does not help yep. even though i was impressed with how he acted in this movie like literally his craft of acting was better than i thought it would be mm -hmm. um I, I still think that put up, eh, why, why do I want to go see this? It, it doesn't matter. This guy's always getting in trouble and it probably isn't going to be Flash anymore. Um, it just really didn't seem like it had enough consequences or, or, or wasn't relative enough to what's going to happen next. Hmm. I'll, I'll come in with my thoughts here and, and then I'll let the, the other two of you uh, crack, take a crack at it. I... I really did my best to try to separate my emotions on this movie. Um, I because I I still think that you know what Ezra Miller did is uh, career ending, uh, and it may very mm -hmm. well continue to be the case after this. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I also know that uh, you know mental health is is nothing to sneeze at, and that. Ezra Miller certainly does need to find that help. I hope they find it. I really do. Um, but if it still to tent pull a movie like this after after the the weird ass shit he pulled in Hawaii um, is its own bag of worms. I also had to try to separate my fact from the fact that to me, Ezra Miller's Barry Allen has never felt like Barry Allen. I and agree. I, I have a very specific idea of what Barry's supposed to be. Uh, you know, he's he's a scientist. Uh, he's a little bit more uh, put together, uh, personality wise, than uh, than the other Flashes. Um, but also, he's not my favorite Flash. You know, Wally's always been my favorite Flash, whether I like it or not. And, and we just got you know eight seasons, nine seasons, or what have you of of Barry Allen on TV, and, and done well for the most part. Well, for the most part, uh, and then we get uh, a flash movie here, and it's funny. I left this thinking. I kind of wish, and it's 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 so weird after that many seasons of the, of the show to say this, but I kind of wish we'd gotten a flash movie, and not a DC team up movie. Um, and instead, that's what we got. You know, making it multiversal with you know you know bringing back tim burton's batman essentially you know bringing back michael keaton uh having the you know the spider the the, the super supergirl uh in there as well you know a new version of kara uh this one being kara zorel uh uh you know uh in, in there as well with the black hair completely different than what we gotten before similar to the uh the the one that we got in the video games uh re reality uh god Superman gone wrong. Injustice. Thank you. Thank you. Injustice. Okay. In, in the Injustice comics, that's essentially where the design of this uh, of this Supergirl comes from. Um, 
and throwing it in, in, in there. I just wish we'd gotten a Flash movie. I wish we'd gotten a Flash villain, for that matter. I wish we'd gotten a villain other than Barry Allen as the villain. Uh, you know, because the Flash's rogues gallery is is one of the best things about the Flash. You know, we can all agree on yeah. that. Yeah. So many villains to choose from. Um, and we didn't get any of them. Uh, the story itself is fine um, because this is Flashpoint and it, and it, it exists. Essentially, Jeff Johns' Flashpoint just sold from a different perspective and, uh, you know, way less of the DC, uh, you know, alternate realityness of it all than, than what we get. We just get, you know, slight changes and different versions of characters and what have you. But I, I kind of just left it flat and I was disappointed by that because I really wanted to be wowed by it because the trailers looked good, you know, and I was trying to separate myself as much as possible and just it didn't hit for me. I'll I was it. wowed by parts, but not the movie. Yes, I, I would agree with you on that as well. There's certain, yeah. there's certain, <laughs> are great. Uh, there's certain special effects that are terrible, and we'll certainly get into that as well. I, I would have excised every bit of the CGI, uh, you know, cameos. Quite frankly, they they didn't work for me. But I, I don't want to, I don't want to talk too much here. Uh, Merg, let me let me let me get your thoughts. Okay. Uh, well, my uh, brief. Pull quote review, like my uh, the two word thing for the poster would be bizarrely entertaining. Uh, that's yeah, that, that's, that's, that's my that's my encapsulation of my reaction to the whole thing. I mean, I agree with what Shane said. I, I my my reaction was that I was surprised at how much I ultimately enjoyed what I saw on that screen. But uh, yeah. Uh, now that said, uh, analytically speaking, I mean this. I had fun watching it, certainly. There were dollops of fan service in there to keep you engaged. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of things that it did well. There were you no know, traces of a real you know, cinematic vision, or, or at least um, I, I thought there were some creative visualizations in there. I liked the way it depicted multiverse creatively as like these spinning uh, cycloramas of different little images in time space, so, which somehow resembled both a globe and like a strip of film wrapped around a globe. It's a, it's a neat yeah. little metaphor for the reality of a, a media property. Um, but, you know, on the level of story, it was several hot messes uh, just kind of poured together into one. Um, it, it, it didn't. I, I agree with Ian's uh, disappointment that this was not so much a flash movie as it was kind of a clearinghouse. Uh, like yeah. a, like an IP display of different Warner Brothers properties and superhero concepts. Uh, it, it reminded me a little of the Space Jam sequel in that <laughs> respect. Not not the original, but the the LeBron James yeah. one of a, a summer yep. or two ago. Where yep. It was just an like, excuse to let Warner Brothers put on display all these other cool things that they had already done and just have the Flash kind of run through them and say, hey, here's... <laughs> Like, like Flash is our host for this retrospective of uh, other movies that uh, DC slash Warner Brothers has done recently and that made money for them. And let's just put the Flash into them and uh, kind of revisit and occupy, reoccupy yeah. those movies for a time. And uh, and uh, oh, by the way, it's also the Flash. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I absolutely would like to see more of the Flash rogues gallery, although I will say that uh, what became of young Barry here. Uh, you know, when he he turns out to be the the culprit in all of this. It's it, it's it's kind of comparable to like the 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 Black Flash concept that uh, Morrison and Miller uh, put out there in their uh, yeah. like, Mark Wade mid run substitution arc uh, in the nineties. Um, so so there's that at least. If, I mean, it's uh, Mirror Master would have been more fun. Certainly, you know, Captain Cold, mm -hmm. Pied Piper, Rainbow Raider, you name it. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's I I. I feel like the uh, the director of this movie, he has a definite style here, and I think that uh, he must be an admirer of Tim Burton, and not just because of the inclusion of Michael Keaton in this. That there were some real Burton-esque moments that before we even get into the full multiversality of this thing. Like even in like the the just just the scenes with Barry by himself, and then Barry with himself in another respect with his younger self. It, it, it felt a little bit like Tim Burton in some of his off pictures uh you know like willy wonka for example or charlie in the chocolate factory and uh the the ending of you know the, the twist ending with george clooney showing up that reminded me a lot of the ending of tim burton's take on planet of the apes in that it made no sense yeah i can see that the explanation of temporal <laughs> mechanics you know like uh michael keaton dumping out a bowl of spaghetti and mashing it around and saying oh here's how time works and like no no it doesn't yeah <laughs> it's like <laughs> 
retro-causality. Barry Allen goes back in time and uh, saves his mother, and that results in Batman being born several decades earlier and also being Michael Keaton instead of Ben Affleck. It's like, uh-uh. Just, yeah. just, just let him go to another... They, they didn't even really get into the whole multiverse like angle of things. We're, we're really dealing with alternate timelines here more than with parallel universes, and there is a difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the thing. That's just what I've always said about the difference between Marvel's multiverse and DC's is that with Marvel's multiverse, you have just endlessly branching alternate timelines, but DC's multiverse is it, it's actual different physical planet Earths all occupying the same space but separated by vibrational frequencies. When you travel through the multiverse in Marvel Universe, you're traveling sideways through time. When you're traveling through the DC multiverse, you're making a tiny micro vibratory step sideways in space. Do you, do you so they the hyper time then? Sure. <laughs> they, they could have mentioned that too. I, I would have been all right with that. But it's, so the, the, the production is, company should have hired Murd as an advisor for this film. Yeah. I, I would have done it pro bono. I would have worked for scale, totally. But yeah, so they're, they're dealing with a different sort of multiversal model here, and I was not altogether there for it. Um, so it's – the storytelling was sloppy. Ian mentioned the CGI effects, and they were you know, in some spots perfectly adequate and other spots much less than that. Some some places it were barely a step up from what we saw in the Justice League movie, and uh, the CGI of uh, Barry running around still looked ridiculous. Looked like yeah. a herky jerky little marionette flopping his limbs around, or maybe that's just <laughs> how Ezra Miller runs in real life. I don't know. And, but, and and Adam, just on that, I completely agree, and that's something that has been consistent with me through almost every more recent DC movie ever made is the inconsistency of the anim the CGI and special effects. They just don't look good enough to me, ever. So just on the whole, I was a little confused, a little disappointed, uh, but uh, a little overwhelmed and a little exhausted, but I, I didn't feel like uh, it had been a full three hours in the movie theater, and I came away feeling like I'd gotten something for my money. I'm not altogether disappointed with what I saw. Yeah. yeah. And now I pass the baton to Chris. Yes. And Chris, I know, I know what some of your thoughts are, and one of them is that it was long. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I, I like Murd's encapsulation, bizarre entertaining. Uh, in general, I agree with that. Um, I went into this movie. My expectations were not high. Um, and having said that, I'll never watch it again, most likely, but, and, and but I, I did overall more or less enjoy the movie. Now I, I didn't, I didn't go with the Ezra Miller baggage because honestly, so many, so much of the art we love throughout time is, is really, I mean, look at, look at the creators is totally compromised that from, I'm just like, you know what? I like Woody Allen films. Mm. Okay. I mean, th th there's. Yeah. You can't escape I can that. that. I mean, if you if you like Picasso, he. I mean, you can go on and on and on and on and on. Sure, um, that's I, fair. I, I just I just separate them, so I wasn't even thinking about that. Having said that, um, I I enjoyed his performance. I agree with you, gentlemen. He's not Barry Allen, really. It's like they've created like this sort of version of the character for the movies, who's kind of like almost got this Peter Parker aspect to it, maybe to make it more sort of tangible for 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 new viewers, etc. So. Establishing that there were so a lot of the scenes where he was trying to figure what was going on, interacting with his family. I enjoyed those. I think he's a talented actor. The Kevin Bacon scene was genuinely funny. Um, when he tries to run around the floor and then he runs runs into the wall, like there were moments that that I, I enjoyed. Um, but those are parts. That's not the whole for me. So two things. First of all, you'd think, and after Man of Steel. DC would realize we don't need an interminable battle at the end of the film that goes on and on and on. Yet they did it again and again yeah. and again. Yeah. And I, I, I'm I'm at a point now in in just my history of watching these movies where I'm so sick of that. To me, it's lazy. It's not good writing. It doesn't do much to advance anything. I I don't care about effects. What I what I love the most about it, the last we touched to talked about across the, Sp the Spider Verse, him talking to his parents, <laughs> like that was more interesting to me. This is just like, oh, and then they kept having people die over and over again, and like, yeah. oh my god, I mean, and you knew you knew that the the that the Dark Flash was him. That was obvious from from yeah. way back. Um, but so 
from the very Brilliant. I honestly got that from the very first uh, like punch into the time stream like like oh oh god yeah. where we're going yeah yeah I was hoping not but it was and then the first time young flash gets hit with something and it's protruding from his arm I'm like oh no yep. yeah so that was interminable um and it took me out of the film to a large degree what I did love was Michael Keaton Mm-hmm. That's now, what Warner Brothers was banking on. Yeah, a couple of things because a, Michael Keaton is a great actor, yeah. and you can give him anything, and he's going to make something good out of it. Two, it was such a delight to see him play clearly that Bruce Wayne from those original movies. Yep. Now is in a much older man. Um, everyone's dead. Like he's alone in the mansion. Uh, every scene he was in, where it's just him talking to them and I, it was gold i love how they showed him by the way because you didn't see this as much in the original movies him showing real martial arts acumen like with the, the tableware and all that that was really cool yeah. um yeah. that was that was really fun um and like murder I, I i knew i mean murder's more versed at that the spaghetti thing was nonsense but still really enjoyed all that it was great seeing him put on the armor again that was all a delight um so this movie for me was like a mishmash. Uh, there were elements of it I enjoyed. Other aspects, I was like, oh, oh God, it just, it just doesn't stop. Um, Supergirl, like, eh, I mean, I like the actress. I mean, she was fine, but I, by, by that point, I was just, I was starting to get bored of the whole thing. It just, it just felt endless. Um, and I'm just, I'm just, I can't do endless superhero movies anymore. You know, it just. Yeah. And DC just seems to just keep doing this over, over and over. They just make these endless films. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk about the, the multiverse part at the end. I can't wait to hear people's views on the special effects, Ian, especially. Um, our dear friend Ryan had a different take on which I will share, which I thought was interesting. But uh, I'm glad I saw it. I, I, like I said, I'll probably never see it again. Well, I, I I will watch it again. I, I know I will, and and a big part of that is just to see Michael Keaton again. And that that was my that was the, uh, my highest expectation was just I can't wait to see Michael Keaton as Batman again. And I was completely satisfied with that. Um, I and and don't get me wrong. What I said in the beginning, I didn't go in worrying about Ezra Miller's performance. I just think everything that happened with him was a detriment to the movie being promoted at all um but i i I really love adam's bizarre bizarrely enjoyable (laughs) comment that's perfect if if your lead star quite literally is unable to promote the movie because of something that they have done then that is going to be a detriment to your movie even in the world digital where you know most of our stuff happens online but guess what he can't go th- you know th- they can't go on hot ones they they can't go on on you know good mythical morning or any of the other big you know youtube shows to promote anything in order to you know get the word out to the younger generation because i can guarantee to you that younger generations could care less that michael keaton's batman is in this oh yeah they may yeah. Have, they may have because their their parents showed it to them, but 1989 Batman is 1989 Batman to us because he is our Batman from our youth. You know, kids from 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 younger generations only know Robert Batmanson and Ben Affleck. Like that's 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 the bulk of it. You know, they may have seen him in in old pictures or or again randomly on on cable or on or shown by other generations, but they're not as familiar with the character. And and Ian, you're absolutely right. Now, my boys have watched that version of Batman because I've watched it a thousand times. They've played the Lego Batman video games, which utilizes the musical score from the Batman films in a lot of ways and gives it that tone. And you have a lot of 89 Batman influence into almost all of those video games. I thought that they would be absolutely over the moon to go see this just so that they could see Michael Keaton as Batman in a movie at their age and 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 really connect in that way. And while I did get Ben to go see it, they could have cared less about it. I mean, he liked it, he enjoyed it. Okay, that's fine. But I thought, well, didn't weren't you excited that that was the Batman in the video games? That's what we, yeah, it was all right. I liked it. So you're you're absolutely right. There, there was no care in the world for almost anybody we knew of that age. Another thing I would say, though, about that level of excitement or lack thereof, Shane, is that 
people of all ages are going to see all the Marvel movies. And I'm not doing the whole Marvel mm-hmm. versus DC. What I'm saying no. though is, is that I think this movie, in a way, because it's supposed to be like the, I guess, the end point of this first movie universe. Yeah, it it perfectly captures what a sprawling mess it's been. Mm-hmm. Um, because there, this movie just perfectly captured the, the 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 lack of coherence that you feel in a lot of the, the DC films that have come out, and I think that can affect people's excitement level. Um, sure. I mean, I, I went to this movie more out of a sense of duty for our mm-hmm. show than like I really want to see this movie, and because I mean, I've always I'm not like a huge Flash fan. I respect and enjoy the character, but having seen all the DC films they've done so far and how spotty they've been. I, I just didn't have high expectations for this. Um, yeah. And then, and, and, and Ian makes a valid point. You know, if, if your star's behavior is also affecting the promotional capacity, well, that can be a factor um, as well. But think about the way this movie ended, like the whole scene with Aquaman right oh. now. Yeah. Go ahead, Ian, go ahead. You can jump right in. <laughs> the water's warm. <laughs> Here, here's my thing. And just because you're mentioning the ending, I have to mention the endings that we could have gotten because there were three total that were. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm talking about the court, the court scene, you know, yep. when he leaves the courthouse, three different iterations of that scene were filmed. Oh, really? Yes. Mm-hmm. One, one involving Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot, which was cut from the film because they felt like having Henry Cavill in there and Gal Gadot at the end of the movie, even though Gal Gadot does show up earlier on in the movie, would have been saying, this is still our DC universe. So they didn't want to have that be, you know, everything's reset. You know, let's, let's have it. Let's have them show up the way that they're supposed to show up. There was also a, an ending that was filmed featuring Michael Keaton. And, uh, I want to get the name of the actress, right? The, uh, the one, the one who plays uh, Supergirl. Um, yeah. Oh, Sasha, something or other. Kale or Kal? Kal? C A L L E, anyway. Some, something something along those lines. Yes. Uh, Sasha, Sasha Kali, I, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, them on, on the courtyard steps saying that, oh, you know, we changed the universe, but clearly something's still amiss. And that's how that would have ended. And then they went with the final version that they went with, essentially tent pulling this film into its own separate reality, if you want to put it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where, you know, no, he changed things and everything's almost the same again, except George Clooney and his bat nipples exist. Like, <laughs> that, that's what I decided to go with as a, 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 nice, a nice extra piece of, you know, uh, flash in a pan, wink and a nod to the fans uh, to end the movie. The, the Aquaman scene you're talking about, not only is it just stupid, <laughs> but... Aquaman 2 is coming out, right? Still happening. And this is not the version of the Aqua of Aquaman that we're going to be getting in that movie. Clearly. Well, that, that, not, I mean, that was my question. Like, are they trying to tell us that because of what happened in flash, this is the bridge to these new films or they're just who cares. And it's just some mi- mess essentially cares. And it's a mess. That's exactly okay. what it off. Yeah. Two things happens off screen. This version of Barry Allen winds up back home reality or this is his home reality now and aquaman 2 is happening in the previous reality that's yeah. that that's what i'm going okay. with branching timelines and all that it's like and, that's- and don't don't misunderstand i i think it's a hot mess i did enjoy seeing george clooney pop out of there that was a fun surprise because i think he's a great bruce wayne not the best batman but i thought he's a fantastic bruce wayne okay. and I didn't. There's a lot about that movie that I don't like, but I also like enough that I've watched it many times since it came out from the you're 90s. A, you're a Glenn from Punishment, my friend. You know, <laughs> I, I love Batman, and I I like the idea of Batman being a character that many actors get a chance to play, just yeah. like James Bond. Because and and I watched the um the Val Kilmer documentary that's on Prime, I think, and going through his entire career. He was so excited to have a chance to play Batman and then so disappointed in the fact that he really had nowhere to go with the role because Batman has to be a certain way no matter who plays it. Mm-hmm. But, but I like that many people can play it. And if these movies show anything, 
it can be done and it can be done well. Um, absolutely loved Ben Affleck in the beginning of this movie. I thought that Batman scene was some of the most fun I've seen mm. in years out of Batman. Mm. And yet we're never going to get that chance to see more of it. Well, it's it, it, it's funny you say it that that specific way, though, uh, because although, yes, we will not get that ben, ben Affleck and we will not get that Alfred again, which I completely agree with you, Shane. That's the best Justice League we've gotten in this entire in this entire universe. Yeah, yeah. The, that that scene in the beginning when Wonder Woman, Batman, and Flash show together, that yep. that's a lot of fun. That's what I've been looking for. And they did that scene well. The director of this movie is going to be directing Brave and the Bold. Oh. So, so there's hope. Yes, there is hope. Okay. And I think that the way that he treated Batman in both ways in this, Keaton and, yeah. and Black, tells me that he is a, a competent you know, superhero director that that seems to at least get the personality and style of Batman down that can make us, you know, a well directed Batman piece. So, well, the scene and, that was, I'm sorry, to no, cut no, you off, Darian. The scene that was very brave in the Boldy, um, when she has them ensnared in the lasso of truth. Oh my God! <laughs> and he's he's mu- and then he's muttering about how his ego. Like that was very entertaining, and and, and yeah, that was a nice touch. And, and again, the DC films never had enough of that type of stuff. No, they just didn't. not at all. So. And, and some of the best parts were between Ben Affleck and Gal Gadot through any movie they were in together. Well, they always had that good chemistry. And, Shane, and, you and I have always been at the, the, the school of thought that we wanted that Ben Affleck Batman film. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're not going to get it, but I, nah. I, I, that's something I really did want to see. Yep. Me too. So. Um, like the flourishes of uh, a blue in uh, in Ben Affleck's. Yes. Yep. Yes. Oh. So yep. much fun to see something brighter than just absolute black and dark. And I and I like the black bat costumes. Don't get me wrong, but it was fun to see blue and gray, a little bit lighter out in the open. You could see him. You could see what was going on. It wasn't dark and dingy. Ian, what is the is the Brave and the Bull movie? Who is the, we? We don't know who's going to be Batman in that film, correct? But that is not, okay. We are, however, starting to get the casting oh. and legacy uh, trickling out. And I will discuss that actually after this as a capper. Yeah. Yeah. Next in the DC universe. But um, we don't know who's going to be playing Batman yet because that's still very far down the road. Um, mm, yeah. We haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. Uh, Mert, I'm curious what you thought about the uh, about the Affleck uh, scenes. Uh, well, uh, I agree that uh, he's uh, his is a take on Batman I would have liked to see a little more of. And I agree that. Uh, you know, he brought a little bit of fun to the role this time around, and uh, I think he came off, and this is probably more costume design than his performance, but he looked Millerish. Yeah, he, he did. Kind of like uh, no. the, the, the DKR Batman, which made it all the more entertaining when he got caught up in the silliness of the lasso of truth <laughs> being draped around him. It's like, yeah, that's something that I'd like. To, that's the kind of thing that I want to befall the Miller dark 80s take on Batman, just make him you know, mutter some embarrassing things about himself <laughs> under the influence of Amazonian magic. Yeah, so that 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 that, that was good. And I was kind of sorry to see, <laughs> to see you know Clooney show up because that 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 signed up. Well, I agree with Shane that that was the fun capper to the whole thing and then it just kind of puts an exclamation point about how messy and doomed this whole iteration of DC's cinematic universe is. Uh but it also showed you know pretty definitively that uh, you know thanks to the messing around in time of Barry. We were not going to see any more of Ben Affleck as Bruce yeah. Wayne here. Yeah, I agree. And let me also say that the, uh, the opening sequence, so the, the opening titles, uh, the whole baby shower thing, <laughs> while uh, the flash has to run around through midair, rescuing infants and dogs and putting babies in microwaves and things. It, it, it was in the microwave for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of stretched the boundaries of good taste. <laughs> May have been I won't disagree with that. Good. I, I laughed, but I felt bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And through that scene, I agree. I, I felt like I was watching a Family Guy episode in some ways where I'm laughing at it and thinking, <laughs> I really shouldn't be laughing at this. <laughs> it was, But it was enjoyable. I'll tell you. Yeah. Like, and yeah. it, her action sequence was one of the more enjoyable parts of it for me. Um, eclipsed possibly only by the... Uh, the Batwing sequence uh, with with Keaton and Barry and Barry, you know, touching heels and 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 you know, speeding off uh, in opposite directions with different colored flash energies and what have you, taking down yeah. the. I think those were all well, well executed uh, battle scenes. Yeah, and and as far as the the animation and the special effects goes, 
it it still is a hot mess across all of what Warner Brothers has done with the DC movies, but I did not mind the way the strange way they looked when he was in the time bubble running through things. I expected it to look a little weird because he's not looking at things clear through time. He's looking at them through his time bubble and through whatever energies are around. I, it's not that I'm forgiving it or excusing it. It's just I accepted it because it made sense to me well, in my head. Well, Shane, I, I I had a similar reaction to, to the to the um, Speed Force universe. I think what's more controversial is the animation at the end when the different versions of Superman appear. Mm-hmm. Now, our dear friend Ryan was trying to stand up for the Nicolas Cage when he was trying to – he said, well, maybe they meant that to look like it came out of the 1990s. Oh, and yeah, see, they did. So – they I did. guess that kind of makes sense. Ian, I know you're the special effects guy here. Like, I'm looking forward to your take. <laughs> All right. Okay. Here, here I go. Um, and and, and I, I may accidentally drop an f bomb, but I'll do my best not to. Um, I, I honestly thought, and I mean, I know that they had to sign off on this. Obviously, the estate, oh, of course, yeah, yeah, on it. Frankly, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, they shouldn't have. And and here and here's here's my here's my take on it. While while I appreciate what they were trying to execute, which clearly they were trying to have it be universe spanning, you know, this is affecting every possible, you know, DC universe, except for the TV ones. Uh that that, that <laughs> I didn't pop- see Ryan Reynolds' Green that's Lantern the, in yeah, there anywhere either. That's the disappointing part. Uh, the, 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 and and appa- apparently they even considered doing that at one point, Murd. Uh, uh, but they, they for some reason, it's possible maybe he was busy filming Deadpool or what have you and wasn't able to participate or they just decided not to. Uh, there was also talk of them reaching out to Christian Bale and Christian Bale basically gave them a middle finger like it's it, it's not happening. Um, but. It, to be respectful for these for these guys, file footage would have been the way to go. Not not half realized mm. EGI renderings of long dead actors, and we've been getting a lot of this. We've been getting this with a mm-hmm. lot, of actors, and we've been getting this with dead actors because going back to a movie that I actually quite enjoy uh, in in the Star Wars universe, um, uh, one. yeah, Rogue yeah, one. Oh, well, Peter, Peter, Peter Cushing is Grandma Frost. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, creepy CGI zombie Peter Cushing. <laughs> See, I thought he looked better than Carrie Fisher's CGI at the end of that movie. Well, I don't disagree. <laughs> he did look better. Yeah. Yeah. I don't disagree, but it was still dead eyes. You know, it still mm-hmm. didn't look quite right. And uh, it's been happening more often lately. And frankly, keep dead actors dead. Unless you're going to actually use their performances, you know, if you're going to use file footage that you have in a can, because you know there's file footage in a can of Christopher Reeve as Superman. Oh, I'm, I'm sure there is. My God, yeah, that they that they could have that they could have cleaned up and rendered. Obviously, they also wanted to throw in Supergirl there for 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 good measure and sure what, later, yeah, which is fine or whatever. But they could have they could have made it work. I just. I'm much more for file footage over CGI. The CGI looked terrible. It didn't actually make me at all feel like I was in the world. I will agree that it was very 90s for Nicolas Cage. But also, how about you just have Nicolas Cage show up? Yeah. He'll, t- he'll take just yeah. about any job if the paycheck's <laughs> there. And, you know? and, Doesn't even need to be that Ian, big a paycheck. Well, he just needs the money. Yeah. Well, I enjoyed that entire scene. And I do keep telling people, hey – they may cut this because I've read those articles too. That when it comes out in mass marketing worlds, they may not include that part. Mm. And I'm hope they don't because you you made the movie. Keep it the way it is. If you release it, uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. Would I have preferred file footage? Sure, I think that would have made more sense. But I won't let that distract d- detract from my enjoyment of they at least tried to do a multiverse better than what they have yeah. to date my, in my any of the movies. Favorite part was the, the, the random uh, flash that showed up. That was not anybody. They basically just like, yeah, like amalgam the face of like four different flashes and had him put on the, uh, the lightning helmet. The helmet and, yep. yep. And, uh, 
at first people thought that it was the the actor who who played yep. him, uh, the Golden Age Flash that wasn't actually the Golden Age Flash, right? Of, right. The, of the Flash, and his response was, "I would know if I was in a movie. I'm not in that movie." But thanks yeah. for th- th- thanks for asking. Like that's that's yeah. it. a rando. Um, when that could have easily been, you know, Grant Gustin if they wanted to. Um, yep. George John Wesley Ship, for that matter. Yep. John yep. Wesley. And and I do think that's a major miss is that they didn't include that TV universe because it was just ending. Yeah, exactly. But but they did include other t- and, and you know before somebody says it, uh, you know, listener wise, yes, Adam West was there. He is a t- yep. George Reeve was there. He is a TV yep. fan. Yep. But. I don't know. Just the whole thing just feels like it could have been executed better. And it makes, it makes me think just going back to it, Chris, you mentioned Marvel. It's hard not to bring up another Spider-Man movie when thinking of this movie. And it's not actually across the Spider-Verse or into the Spider-Verse. Well, it, it's, it's, it's a, uh, what is the last, the last live action one? Exactly. Yeah. Spider-Man. Where they, exe- where they, exe- they executed a multiverse very well. <laughs> well, Spider-Man. <laughs> well, Compared to this one, yeah, yes, yeah, but they yeah. still didn't do that one well, very well. And, and 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 yes, Far From Home had actual living actors that they could use. So that that's you know that's yeah. other thing. But um, just going back to even like I don't know, like the execution of the of the storytelling and crafting a multiverse, I feel like was just better done there because, like Mert said, this is sliding timelines more than it is multiverse. But then you throw in actual multiverse at the end. It muddles and confuses things. Um, yeah, and, and some of what they did in this really made me sad for what could have been with a little bit more love and care and a little bit better storytelling and writing. What what could have been great really is lost on us, and we probably won't ever see in this way. But I think I think Shane again. I think it's because the foundation was just not there. Well, I agree with that because of the movies that came. Yeah, I, I won't that. disagree. I mean, Right. I, I said I wouldn't compare, but hell, now I will. Right. One of the reasons when I went to see Far From was the last one called Far From Home. Far From Home. Right. When the different villains appeared, no. people. No way. Sorry, go, no, which no way. I, I don't know. Which, the la- the third Spider Man film. Um, I mix up all the titles, but when all the villains appeared, like people in the theater were cheering. Like there was a real enthusiasm and excitement. Not only yeah. was it, you know, overall film executed, but there was a very coherent history going up in the movies going up to these scenes in this flash film i mean we know all these different characters that are appearing but other people like like who could care less who adam west is or george you know georgia reeves or etc i mean i i thought that was cool but um it's just yeah it's just a misfire for me yeah. overall there were four people clapping in my theater uh and and i i applaud those four people uh <laughs> That's there was almost nobody cheering in my theater. They, I don't think half of them even knew who these people were that they were seeing. Yeah, yeah when I went, I was, I was only one of like four people in the theater. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it came out on Father's Day, which I thought would have helped it. But yeah, I don't think that helped at all. Uh, like Father's Day weekend. I should... My last mention of those Spider-Man movies, I promise. But uh, the screen story for this movie was created by John Francis Daly who created the first of these live action Spider-Mans. Um, <laughs> you know, he was the writer on that. Uh, he also did the Dungeons and Dragons movie that just came out. Um, you know, good, good, pe- good pedigree, you know, very entertaining that Dungeons and Dragons. movie. I, seen I just watched that and I did not think that would be good. That was better than a lot of movies I've seen. I really enjoyed that. Super duper fun. I, I, I had, yep. I had a time with it, um, but screen story. Is by John Francis Daly, not screenplay. Screen yeah. is by Christina Hold- Hodson. So he came up with the idea. Christina Hodson is the main screenplay writer, but I guarantee you there were also other cooks in the kitchen mm. that <laughs> were this along the way, uh, one way or the other. And she wrote Bumblebee, who, which is to this day, wow. I think, favorite of the Transformers movies. I agree. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily blame any one person. Anyone who had to take on this DC cinematic universe at this stage—that's a hell of a. That's the hell of yeah. a challenge. You're, you're going upstream yeah. on that one. I, so. I I do want to at least talk a little bit about you know like the general plot of the movie because we haven't really done that that much. We've been talking more about like the how it actually worked, but um, 
anybody who's read Flashpoint knows what the basic uh, story point of, of it is here. Uh, main difference being that, you know, his his mother his mother is already dead in this version of the DCU. It's not the machinations of of a of an evil Flash that goes back in time to mucks with muck with uh, you know the, the timeline one way or the other for that at first because that happened uh, in Flash Rebirth initially um, for, with Jeff John's story. Um, here she's dead. Flash knows he can go back in time thanks to Justice League, depending on which version you you watch. Uh, one more, a little bit more than the others, but uh, decides that he's going to go back in time, save his mother uh, by by you know having having the uh, the the tomato sauce be <laughs> that his father doesn't go out and the most important can of tomatoes in all of DC history, yeah, <laughs> and changes the course of history in the process. Uh, then when running back into into his future he gets pushed to the side by uh, a dark flash of some kind winds up in his college days and meets a younger version of himself that's where ezra miller's acting i felt was absolutely the strongest i will agree yes with you. absolutely yeah because i think they did a great job of playing both characters um yep. and, and and the younger ezra miller actually felt younger than than the older version that that we that we met uh, I, I, that's that's the part of the movie i enjoyed the most definitely. yeah and that and that's what impressed me about that what we could have possibly gotten if things would have been a little bit different in the world hmm? yep a hundred percent agree with that uh but then you know he's he's there you know the the barry's there uh barry then decides that uh you, you know he has to uh do what he can to uh make sure that this version of himself also gets the uh the blast that turns him into the flash of course in the process younger barry gets powers he loses his you know that because that's the way life works um i thought that was odd it, it, it was odd uh i guess i guess uh it's like a it's like a light switch you get you get hit by Maybe. the <laughs> Time it gives it to you. You get hit by the chemicals and lightning again, and it leaves you. And then you get hit by the chemicals and lightning again, and it gives you powers again. I fine, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, then looking around, things have gone horribly wrong uh, as Zod starts attacking, uh, and the events of Man of Steel are happening way sooner than they than they should have been. Um, not sure by how long. I think by about a year or two uh from 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 the looks of it because I, I, I was i was checking out by that point so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i mean they showed barry in a proto version of his suit that was basically you know just like trainers and a and a and a <laughs> overcoat ski mask basically yes yeah S similar to the to the first costume that uh that uh that spider-man that uh spider-man wore in the raimi uh uh set of movies yes yeah. mm -hmm. And then, you know, he you see him running to try to save people uh, in that attack. So he's clearly been at least for a couple of months, if not a year, uh, been been the flash. Those events start happening earlier than they should. So, of course, Barry's going to go find Superman. Superman is nowhere to be seen and neither is anybody. One of my favorite throwaway uh, jokes in this was calling uh, Aquaman's dad. <laughs> yes yes yeah that was good that was good yeah uh, asking, asking him for uh it yeah is is arthur dad is arthur there you want to talk to my dog <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah are you are you uh, married to an undersea sea queen and then you see what his uh what his uh... <laughs> no. yeah um, but yeah, because of his, because of what he did, everything's different. There aren't any heroes. Uh, Diana is nowhere to be found. Uh, there's no Aquaman. There's no Superman. But apparently, there's a Batman, and people know of him, but he hasn't been around for a while. They go to his uh, to his Wayne Manor, and they meet Michael Keaton, Batman, at that point, and we get the whole spaghetti scene and yada yada yada. Um, and Michael Keaton is so wowed by by Barry Allen that eventually he's like, you know what? Maybe I will put my suit back on and become a bat again. And that's exactly what he does. Helps them out. Tries to find Superman in uh, the middle of Russia. Would have been a really cool swerve to have it be 
instead of uh, Flashpoint at this point, Red S- Sun. Sun, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would have been. I thought that. that would have been a really cool turn of events, but that's not how they decided to go. Um, and they find Kara there. Uh, you know, we later find out that Kal El never even made it to Earth, was killed by Zod. But Kara joins the fight. They go and fight Zod. Uh, things keep going horribly awry. And, you know, young Barry is like, oh, I can save things. I can fix things. If we go back in time, they try that a few times. Doesn't work. Try a few times. Doesn't work. And eventually find a version of this Barry that has now been completely destroyed by doing this and yeah. dark flash that started the process at the beginning and they have to base that barry has to make the decision to go back in time and and you know take the the magical tomatoes out of the cart once more to to write time and fix things and then you know he does and gets back into the present but he put it on a higher shelf and because of that at least his father isn't in jail anymore and then he and- walks by and there's george Clooney. And you know what? I this so, summary and wow, that was impressive. You, you you back up to where you're talking about the young Barry, our Barry, and the dark Flash Barry all talking together in the Speed Force. I did up. Uh, I do applaud them for having that young Barry written to realize what he becomes and sacrificing himself to avoid that. Okay, that makes perfect sense. And that truly is in most ways the essence of a hero and their tragic story at times. Great. Um, I'm okay with putting the tomato soup, uh, tomato sauce on the higher shelf to clear his dad. Great. That makes sense to me. Um, I don't know. I don't like that they just perpetually made it so that Michael Keaton's character couldn't survive. Mm hmm. Because I wonder what changed, because we know there was a Batgirl movie coming, and he was in it, and that was from this to that. Mm. So it's not like that was the way this was always going to go. And if it was, then I really want to know what the explanation for the Batgirl movie would have been, because I still really want to see that. Well, yeah, they will. I, 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 I still think we will at some point as well, but also... I feel like there may be a version of this movie out there where he does not die. Um, and, 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 and you said it, well, by, you by filming that ending, end. Yeah. 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 Well, whether or not, whether or not that's because of, you know, timey wimey shenanigans and, and, you know, moving the, the sauce and what have you, and somehow he's still there or whether that entire scene goes differently, it remains to be seen. Cause I know there were reshoots. Yeah. Be and, and all that it's possible that that may have been the case but yeah to bring back michael keaton's batman only to then have him be killed like three times like eh. <laughs> yeah that that was disappointing and and like you said reshoots could have happened and you know with with the new regime they might have just said hey nope we, we have to change this and there's time to reshoot this so that it ends this way and that's what they did and maybe that's not the case i, I don't know that i would care to know at the moment because it really doesn't matter. This is the what it is. This is what we have. Um, but there are things about it that I, I, again, I think it's just lost on what could have been. It, it makes me sad for what could have been a really good story done just a little bit differently. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, and for that matter, if you want to see a, a actually a pretty decent version of Flashpoint on film, watch the animated version. Uh, yeah. I, they did a re- Good job of of actually executing that in that, um, but, but again, that's more straightforward t- telling of, of adaptation. A, yeah, a, adaptation. Then I think I think that animated film is the first time they use the new animation. That's not my favorite in the DC universe that mm-hmm. they've been using. It's okay, but I prefer other ways to animate things. But I, that that's a whole nother discussion. Sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Other things to point out, there is a version of the script to this movie sitting on a shelf somewhere that Ezra Miller and Grant Morrison co-wrote. Wow. Mm. I would love to see that week at some point. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That raised both my eyebrows. And, yeah. Wow. Um, uh, I, I appreciated the Grayson uh, storefront in the background in the alleyway yeah. where Barry Allen's uh, uh, you know apartment complex is. Um, and, and I liked actually getting to see this version of Iris a little bit because we had. Yeah. Really- yep. Her. Yep. Yep. I, but that, that was, I, I think she did a, a pretty adequate job of playing, of playing. Yeah, Iris. I do too. 
no no issues with that at all. Wasn't there a comic shop across from his apartment? A collectible one of the yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, it was a collectible store that that, that definitely right. um so yeah, that was that was there. And uh I I think other than that, all I'll say is um as a farewell question dot 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 question mark to this to this reality um i guess it serves its point because like i said by the time the movie's over it, we're not in the same universe anymore so clearly we could just follow any universe we want now because that's that's over um so that's that uh yeah <laughs> kind of hard to say it any other way um yeah just someday we'll get a flash movie someday we'll actually get a flash movie with a flash rogue um there was a there was a flash script that was written back in the day uh by uh david hater uh who you know who wrote uh a bunch of different uh you know superhero movies over the years uh there is a flash script running around that involved hunter zolomon and uh the reverse flash and all that 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 just never went forward uh around the time that uh that the aborted justice league movie that george miller would have would have made uh mm-hmm. would, was circling the rounds um but then that didn't wind up happening and you know we got this one and all in all not bad and, and part of what i what i read in, in some articles and, and some of this stuff i wish i would really say for future use to to quote here and stuff i thought i had read where they did confirm that in in their in their re, uh, canon in their mind canon yes Reverse Flash comes and kills Barry's mom, but they did not delve into that here because that's not the story. That's to be told later, but I don't know what later that is because we're not going to have this stuff again. But at some point, they might visit that. I don't know how or why, but... It's it's certainly possible. And what I assumed. Yeah. Uh, by, by the way, I'm sorry. I said David Hayter. That's the guy who voiced uh, uh, Solid Snake in Metal Gear. Uh, it, it, David oh. <laughs> Goyer uh, is the... Is the uh, so my, my apologies on that. Um, and just because you mentioned the mom, uh, Shane, I, I thought that uh, that Maribel Verdu did a great job of playing Nora. I think she was. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Entire film. Uh, that and Ron well, was- the, the, Yeah. Well, the scene where she's talking to him in the supermarket, I thought oh, was very yeah. well acted. Uh, you really yeah. felt the emotion in that scene. She, and yep. you, so, what, what a kind hearted person uh, her, she was. Yeah. And I. And, um, what's what's his name was was um his father ron livingston, I, livingston. John, yeah Lo- love him from office space forward oh, i mean who who doesn't <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was a recast because billy crudup was his uh original father yeah. uh, yep to bow out i think due to due to uh COVID, if i remember correctly mm-hmm. uh, just uh, due to protocols and what have you uh yeah. but to get to he's, he's a he's a good actor too <laughs> yeah um I'll I'll just say one last time here to to round up my thoughts. Everyone knows my thoughts on Man of Steel and how I don't like it. Mm. Um, and I think that may have potentially soured me a little bit on this movie because, you know, to to go back, I understand going back to your first movie in the line here uh, as the catalyst, but they went back to a movie that I already didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> And, well, yeah, I'll, I'm not thrilled with the, with the whole Zod storyline part of this either. Yeah, I, 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 it's great to see Michael Shannon back in any way, but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, Zod part was easily the weakest. I feel like. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I I, I like Van Still more than you do, and we've talked about that in the past. But they went back to the, the part of the movie I like the least, which is the internal pornographic fight scene yes. in that film. <laughs> Well, that I, took me out I of like way. Man of Steel as little as you do, Ian. But the, the thing is, the Flash to quote the parts of that movie that I liked the least. I mean, even you know, Chris is talking about the destruction porn scene in Metropolis. I mean, granted, we did have it an interminable battle, but at least it didn't happen in an inhabited area. Yeah. This time. We it was in the desert. Scrapers yeah. being destroyed and mm-hmm. countless off-screen civilian casualties. At least they mm-hmm. did us that favor. Yeah. And when all is said and done, I feel personally I'm more likely to watch this movie again than I am to watch Man of Steel again. So I'll agree with that at this point, yeah. Who goes to Dynamite Murd? I agree entirely with that assessment. Yes, uh, and uh, and look, Dragon Ball Z has proven to us that there are fields anywhere you want, easily run to to have your fight. They just chose not to do that, and you know. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. All right, gentlemen, uh, any other thoughts on this uh, before we wrap it up? Only to say, I do think it's worth watching once. I think if you're a DC fan at all, if you're a Michael Keaton fan at all, I do think it's worth oh, watching once. Yeah, yeah. Whether that be free online, with commercials, whatever it is, I, I do think it's worth watching at least once. Mm-hmm. And, and and it will be on Max soon. Uh, you yeah. know, this, obviously it's it's a it's a Warner Brothers uh, feature, so it will be on Max for anybody who has it, whether they have the free plan with with ads or whether they have uh, you know one of the higher tiers or what have you. Uh, I I will be watching it when it is available, uh, just to too. see it one one more time and see how I feel. But um, Michael Keaton said, "You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts." I think we got nuts. Yeah. Yeah. That's really all else I can say about this thing. Um, I'll go first on my freaking swears. I'll, I'm going to give it a solid uh, 2.75. I think uh, that's as far as I can go on that one. Murd? Uh, a weird movie like this deserves a weird number, so I'm going to give it pie freaking swears. <laughs> I mean, one, four, one, et cetera, freaking swears. Uh, that's awesome. Magnificent. I love it. I love it. Chris, <laughs> I'm in your camp being 2.75. Okay. And Shane, I'm a three. Okay. All right. Uh, and, and one person who gives this uh, movie five out of five, Eric Stoltz. I think Eric Stoltz. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. That's what it. I meant. I said Kevin Bacon. I meant Eric Stoltz. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's right. That, yep. Well, they, no, no. They also mentioned Footloose and they did mention. That's Kevin. true. That's true. Yeah. You're right. So I'm, I'm partially redeemed. Okay. <laughs> in the if not the family ties guy then something else like they mentioned something else that (laughs) that was funny (laughs) yeah did they am i am i remembering right they showed a clip of eric stoltz no not 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 a clip of him they they showed us a tattoo of him uh because the of the friends in the apartment had a tattoo of marty mcfly eric stoltz on his arm become a pop culture icon in that universe okay exactly yeah, and and let this be the last time that we get an alternate reality that has Eric Stoltz as as Marty McFly because it's been done to death. Please, let's. Get- <laughs> it, it, I'd I'd rather see Jake Gyllenhaal as Spider Man than uh, than <laughs> Stoltz as, uh, as Marty McFly at this point. It's been done. Ah. <laughs> uh. Gentlemen, I think this was a a, a well done uh, deciphering of two movies. Um, I feel like we could save our Indiana Jones talk for our next comic talk. Yeah, uh, sounds good. That's fine. Yeah, a little bit further in depth on that, but uh, yet another movie involving time in certain ways, and we'll we'll leave it. Yeah. At that. But uh, yeah, that's that with that. Um, I think that's about it. Also, episode wise, I, I think we shot our bolt. Uh, but we shot our bolt. Excellent. You folks at patreon.com slash comic geek speak. Once again, thank you so much for your continued support of the show in any way that you can give it for as little as a dollar a month. And also we have gotten a, like a couple of muddle the merge sent in over the last couple. Oh, I do thank good. you. Have. However, please send in your muddle the merge. So we have at least a little bit of a stockpile in there. Um, whether you've done it before or whether this is your first time or your first time, uh, then please make sure to, uh, to get, <laughs> in there whenever you can at comicgeekspeak at gmail.com with Muddle the Murd in the subject line. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll happy to have your uh, your attempts in there uh, so that you can attempt to win yourself a prize. All right, Shane, uh, let me get the music ready so we can have you be to an episode and not have a stand-in in the form of me trying to remember it all from uh, uh, by heart while at the studio. So that was... yeah. And, and and I'm still reading it off my phone from something <laughs> I created years ago. I will never remember that voicemail number as long as I live. <laughs> I do at the time, but when I was on the spot at the studio, all I could think of was eight six seven five three zero nine. It just. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. you too. And once you get once you get that in your head, man, that's not leaving. Exactly. Exactly. All right, Shane. <laughs> All right. Visit us at comicgeekspeak.com to send us an email. The address is comicgeekspeak at gmail.com. To leave a voicemail, the number is 267-702-6642. Stop by thecomicforums.vanillacommunity.com. Follow us at youtube.com slash comicgeekspeak. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. 
Thanks to everyone who contributes to the episodes. Thanks for your um, support. And please send in the Muddle the Murds as Ian suggested. We would like to have a stockpile and I'd like to hear a Muddle the Murds soon. And as always, we are uniting the world's mightiest heroes, one listener at a time. Flash, ah, ha, 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 